Okay, so College Week Live attendees, uh, this is Broward College and we would like to welcome to this international event today. I hope that you have been attending other presentations and uh, checking the booths, the schools. Uh, we are very eager to provide uh, lots of information and to make sure that we can assist you in your decision uh, to higher education. It's uh, certainly a pleasure to have you today um, at Broward College, both Broward College presentation. But where in the world is Broward College? Okay, we are in the sunny and beautiful South Florida. Uh, we have been in business. We were established in 1960, so we have been uh, teaching for a long time now. Uh, we currently have six to seven thousand students. That is right, six to seven thousand. It's uh, about the size of a city. It's a lot of students. And they are attending classes in one of our three campuses and eight centers. Uh, our students are representing 150 countries and they speak 45 languages. So we have students from all over the world and we would like to welcome you at Broward College as well. Uh, today, Broward College is showcasing the Aviation Institute. Uh, my name is Regina. I work in the Office of International Education. I have Evelyn with me, and she works uh, at the Aviation Institute. I have Tim and Carlos, and those are the ones you can see. So, guys, say hi. Hello. Hello. Hey, how's it going? I'm Tim. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Broward College is accredited to award associates and bachelor's degrees and today we're going to be talking about our aviation programs and it's going to be a treat for you because we're not only going to be talking but you will be able to see Tim and Carlos in action uh, as in our flight simulator. So I'm going to pass uh, the word quickly to Tim and Carlos so they can introduce themselves and let us know what they're going to be doing. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Carlos Orta. I work here at Broward College South Campus um, in the Aviation Institute. I am originally from Puerto Rico and I want you guys to welcome uh, uh, Tim. Uh, tell us where you're from, Tim. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Tim, as he said, I'm from Mississippi. I uh, moved here just for this program as we'll, we'll state later on in the program. Alright, so we're going to be doing a flight simulation. <laughs> Uh, here in our uh, AATD, which is one of the simulators that we have here on campus uh, to train our, our pilots, our student pilots in the uh, professional uh, pilot program. So we're going to start uh, starting the simulator and uh, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and uh, post them and we'll have a uh, few people here to be able to answer your questions. Okay, so let's start uh, with the simulation. And when we do that, I'm going to ask you a few questions, okay? Um, how, how did you hear about th this program? I tell you what, when I was looking to fly, I decided, you know, where would I want to go to school? So I was researching the professional pilot program and all the schools available, and I came across Broward College. Now, if you do your research, you'll see that Broward College is accredited for being one of the top schools, one of the top public universities in the nation. So I was like, you know, that, that seems like a good thing. I called and I talked to Ms. Evelyn, and she gave me very good information. She gave me a lot of help. And I just decided this was the place to be. And I tell you that it's a great decision. Not only is the weather great, the school's great, the experience has been just a, a great experience overall. Uh, I haven't had any arguments so far. So, and how long have you been in the program? I started back in May. Um, you know, people might say it, it's a slow start, and there's a lot of things to do, but it's really not. I've, I've accomplished so much such a short period of time and uh, everyone else can do the same thing. So what, are you, what have you accomplished so far in the program? Well, you know, I started with my private license. That took a couple months. Um, you know, the main thing with any license is waiting on your, your, your final check. But I've done my private, my instrument, and my, uh, I'm about two flights short of my commercial as we speak. So when you were researching uh, you know, into your program and into becoming a pilot, what made you decide to go to a college to do this? Oh, well, there's a, a lot of things. So if you go to just any normal school, you need 1,500 hours to get a job at the airlines. Uh, that's a lot of hours. So anything you can shorten, which you really can, if you go to a university, there are new regulations out to where if you have an associate's degree at an accredited university, which Broward College is, you need 1,250 hours. If you get a bachelor's degree, 
you need 1,000. Now, there are multiple ways to get your hours. You can be a CFI, which we offer here. You can get that license at this school, and then you can work for our school. And in doing okay. so, you'll make really good money. And CFI, basically, for people that are not familiar with the term, CFI stands for Certified Flight Instructor. Um, if you finish this course, basically you'll become a flight instructor. You can get hired either by Broward College as an instructor or any other flight school, and it's a great way to you know start your your flight career. So, so as you said, you got the CFI, and uh, you you can get paid to work, and then you can gain your experience, continue to gain knowledge, and teach other people and mentor them, or you can you know do other things like banner towing or crop dusting. There are multiple things to do, but if you decided you didn't want to work to get these items, to get this experience, and you just wanted to pay out of pocket, do the math. Uh, one hour is anywhere from 100 to $150 an hour. So you'd save 500 hours by getting a bachelor's degree. So basically it'd be more economical to go through a college program, get the, the education that you need, and basically you'll become a qualified professional pilot with an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree, uh, and that would help you get into a uh, a pilot uh, career faster and more economical. So, um, what are some of the things that you that you like the most about our program? Uh, just to elaborate on that last question real quick, as in any job, a, a degree is always the best thing. You know, am I going to take the guy that just went out there and had his high school to graduate degree, or am I going to take the guy with the bachelor's degree that excelled in the program and took the time to invest in his future? So, I always get a degree. Um, and the next thing, what was the question, I'm sorry? Well, what, what are the, some of the things that you like the most about the program? I, I mean, really, just the experience. The people that I work with, um, they're, they're just great. You know, I, I'm a student here, but never do I feel that, you know, what, what I have to say doesn't matter. You know, we have multiple things, with whether it's Alpha Eta Rho, which is a fraternity for pilots, or anyone in the aviation field, I guess you would say. And, you know, we, we discuss any problems we have, any concerns, you know, anything like that. So we always have our point of view there to be heard. We also have, you know, uh, our, you know, our advisors, our, just pretty much anyone that we are here at the school. They're all here to help us at any point in time. So training has been really fast. You know, a lot of people go a little slower, but if you want to put the time in, if you have the ability to fly, they make sure you can get it done in a very short period of time. You know, like I said, I I finished three ratings in what, less than you know nine or ten months, and I'm probably within a year from being at the airlines. I can you know I'm within a month of getting paid to fly and teach other people. Well, that's really interesting that you said that. Uh, there's a, a there's different ways that you can complete the program. Um, some people have you know faster pace they're able to do more uh, it depends on your situation some people can do it uh, a lot longer. it takes a little, a little bit longer so the program is flexible to where the you know where you can actually do it at your own pace as, as far as you're completing the courses that are required so that's that I think that's really important so now what's some of the plans that you have for the future once you finish the program what do you envision uh, is going to happen with your career in the future next few years and once again I just want to elaborate on the last one you know as he said you can finish at your pace you know there's a curriculum that we fly that keeps us in order to do things correctly now if you go out and you have a problem with one of the lessons you need a little bit more extra work you can always sit down with your instructor and they'll give you more explanation uh, you know more I, I guess knowledge in order to, to complete it so that's another thing that I really enjoy about the course that I never have to worry about you know, well, what if I can't get this? Am I going to fail or am I going to continue? I always have someone to mentor me to continue. Uh, my expectations as of now, you know, I would like to finish my commercial, which would be very shortly. Then I'm going to go to commercial uh, to see if I, you know, I would love to start making money and gain more hours and help other people. I'm going to do my multi-engine, um, basically where you fly an airplane with two different engines. And then I'm going to continue the airlines. You know, I'm going to do my best to, to land a really nice regional airline with a thousand hours because I'm going to continue in this program to get my bachelor's. Uh, I'll go to the airlines and, you know, try to build my seniority and build my knowledge at that point and try to make myself marketable to, you 
you know, Delta, and American, and that kind of thing. So now that we're talking about your experience and what you're learning in this program, how do you feel that your training compares to other schools? I mean, do you feel that you're getting a high quality education, and, and why? You know, I, I can't uh, strictly say about other schools. Now, I, I've seen other people flying, uh, other schools, you know, other, uh, I guess, unaccredited organizations, and I wouldn't want to be part of them. You know, I just know that my knowledge and what I've learned, my base skills, you know, just the, the basic fundamentals are so much different, more in depth, and I would say safe, you know. I've seen a lot of, a lot of people out there that, you know, that would need more instruction, but so far I haven't seen that from our school. Um, I feel that we have a very nice school and, you know, I, I would recommend it to anyone. My son, if this program's still around, which I'm sure will be, he'll, he'll be attending the school. Excellent. Uh, I would like to hear that. Um, tell us about the, uh, the class of the courses that you've taken. How do you feel that they fit within the program? Do you feel that all the courses that you've taken are relevant to the class, uh, to, the, to the career path that you've chosen? I do. You know, there's there's a lot of ground courses that I think you're talking about. You know, you have what's a, your private pilot course that you start with, and uh, you always need to be enrolled with the course as you take your flight courses. So you basically get the knowledge, whether it's about your plane, you know, the aerodynamics, the flaps, I mean, just the, the systems or anything that relates to the plane or flying itself while you're going through it. So you have ground courses that you take at the school, which are very low cost and gains you a lot of experience that way that you take with the school. And um, so far I haven't seen anything that I disagree with, you know. There's, uh, you, you might think that you're getting too much knowledge actually, you know. There, you might think, well this doesn't relate to me, but you'll learn soon. Anything in aviation, anything you can learn, anything you can uh, pick up, you want to know it, you know. You're always going to learn. I don't care if you've been flying for 30 years, 40 years. There's always something you don't know. So uh, my advice is to take as much as you can and learn as much as you can. Excellent. Um, talk to us about the uh, the equipment that the uh, the flight school uses for the training. Uh, tell us, you know, kind of a quick description of kind of the different aircraft that we have here on the, on our facility. Now we'll start with the simulators. Um, this is what you call an ATD. It's you know you, you should be able to see me flying. It's a full visual uh, airframe. I don't know if you can tell, but we have uh, five total screens, so I can see my wing tips. I can see the what's in front of me. Um, there's multiple things you can do. They can fail your equipment, so you have that ability to know what would happen in the air if you were in live situation. They can put wind or water or snow or thunder. I mean, they can do anything they want to teach you, to show you what it would be real life and uh, lifelike. We have what's called an FTD, which is a uh, flight training device. It's it's a little different. It's more of a approved device through the FAA, which this is too, uh, but this is more visual. The, the other one's more for uh, instrument rating, so when you're flying in the clouds. And the good thing about that is, you know, you have a course with college, and it's very low cost. So you pay a very small amount, and then you can use that simulator for 20 hours a semester, which all of this time is loggable in your logbook. So you, this is going to gain your recent flight experience. This is going to keep you able to fly. You know, if say you haven't flown for two years, you can come in here, fly a sim a for a very your knowledge, right? Yeah. So basically, just to explain a little more about that uh, that fact that he just mentioned. Um, the simulators that we have here in Broward College, they are approved by the FAA and basically every time you come in here with your instructor and you do any type of uh, training, that you can put on your logbook and that goes towards your experience or your total hours. And that's a really good uh, tool to have because basically you'll be able to learn certain things that are more difficult to learn in the airplanes. Uh, for example, if you're practicing landings, um, the airplane, well basically you have to operate the, the airplane and then you have to fly around the pattern to be able to land several times in this device you can actually practice more uh, I guess quicker you can actually practice um, the landings and once you land you can reset it to a final approach and then pra continue practicing your your landings I think that's a great tool it really helps you save money at the long, at, at the long, uh, long run of the program 
and um, it's one of the things that we have here. We have five simulators uh, on our campus, and uh, it's one. Of, in fact, it's one of my favorite parts of the uh, the whole program, the simulation. Um, Another thing I'd like to add about that, as you said, save money. Not only does it save money, but in the plane you can't press a pause button. Here in the simulator, though, at any point in time, my instructor, it, say he was my instructor, he could push pause and explain to me what I was doing wrong or what I was doing right or what I should fix. So not only does it help you save money, but it gives you more you know, experience with what you should be doing. It work, lets you work on the fundamentals. Okay, well, let's talk a little more about the actual flight part. Just tell us a little more about what you're doing right now so people that are interested in aviation, they can see what you're doing and what you've learned so far, okay, the physics of, of flight. Uh, real quick, I'm sorry, we, we forgot to uh, discuss the planes. Oh, yes. We let's, have, talk about, uh, let's talk about the airplanes real quick. Sorry, we have multiple planes. We have uh, what's called a 172R model, which is just a, a smaller horsepower 172. We have a 172S model which is a, a, a larger engine, a uh, faster plane. These are both high-wing planes. They're basically identical except for the engine. Uh, we have a Piper Aero, which is our complex aircraft, uh, retractable gear. That's where you do most of your commercial in. We have a Piper Warrior for our multi-engine. And uh, all of these planes are in great shape, and I'd love to fly them. That's about as much as I can say, I guess. Well, we have actually a, a Seminole, Piper Seminole for our multi-engine. Um, and uh, we have a total of nine aircraft. Uh, we have plenty of uh, availability for the students to be able to do uh, several um, training flights during the week. Uh, that way we can basically go through the, pro through the course and your flight training at the same time, okay? So now tell us uh, pretty much what you're doing, uh, what you're practicing, and you know, tell us some of the things that you look for when you're practicing landings. If you'd like to demonstrate how you can reset me, and I'll start from the very start. Absolutely. All right, so he just reset me. This is the start of the runway. Uh, we're on one zero left, and our runways are basically magnetic headings. So if you were looking at a compass, this would be one zero on the compass. So I'm going to take off. And, you know, our engine started. I'm pushing my brakes. I'm going to go full power. When I get to 55 knots, I'm going to pitch up, and that's what's called a rotation speed. Once I get to that, then I'm going to climb at 74. That's VY. That's going to give me the fastest climb at the fastest amount of time. So I hit my 55 knots, pitching up slightly. And you should always keep one hand on the throttle, one hand on the yoke. Uh, it's it's not it's just good practice. You know, if ever you have an engine failure or anything like that, you want to be safe. So I'm going to continue to climb. Uh, the traffic pattern altitude is normally a thousand. That's the standard. So I'll go to 300 feet below your traffic pattern altitude. You can turn your base or your crossway. So this is uh, your starting departure. Then I'll take a left to do my crosswind. So I'm going to climb to 700 feet before I take a left turn. Notice that I'm climbing anywhere from 74 to 80 knots. That's a, a very good climb rate. And I'm going to continue to look at my instruments and look outside. Make sure you're not going to hit any obstacles. So if you could see to the right here, or straight in front of us, you see there's towers in front of us. You want to be aware of your surroundings. So I've hit my 700 feet. I'm going to look right, look left, make sure there's no other traffic, make a left turn. Standard rate. I don't know if you can see the instrument here, but there's a, a what's called an inclinometer. You keep the ball center, keep the lane level with the standard rate turn. Reach my 1,000 feet. I'm going to level off at this point. And I'm going to continue to get a full 90 degree turn in. That way I, I have a full crosswind. So I'm at a thousand feet, I got my 90 degree, I would look right, look left, no traffic, now I'm going to make another turn. Continuously making sure that my ball is center and my plane is level. Reduce my power because I'm in the traffic pattern. I have enough altitude, enough power. As you can see, the runways to our left. This is considered our downwind. So we're downwind because you always take off into the wind. So now we're downwind, opposite of the direction we took off. 
I'll continue to fly at this altitude until I get beam the numbers. Beam the numbers is right here on the other side. And once that happens, then I'm going to reduce my power to 1500. And I'm going to put 10 degrees of flaps. Flaps are, uh, produce lift, but they also produce drag. So they slow you down and keep you airborne. You do this in increments. Uh, there's, you know, there's air speeds for every airplane. Uh, this one happens to be 10 degrees below 110, and you can put the other 20 below 85. Or you can go full, right, below 85? Right. So if you can see our, our runway to our left, I'll rock my wings so you can have a better view. The straight one there. I'm starting a slow descent. As long as it's a safe, stable descent, there's no problems. So 1500, 10 degrees of flaps. You normally head out for a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to turn around this road. That's going to be my 45 degrees to the, the runway itself. I would still look right, look left, make sure there's no traffic. Make a nice standard rate turn, usually no more than 20 degrees, 30 at the max. My runway is to the left. I'm below 85 knots. I'd put another 10 degrees of flaps. Uh, this happens to be a 172. This is where you would start your train. The landing gear is always stationary. You don't have to worry about lowering it. Uh, but once you get to commercial, you would have to, you would be in a retractable gear, which you would, the landing gear would go up or down, and you would make sure you would put that step in the process. So this is my final. Uh, the last leg was my base, so I turned my final. I'm still below 85. I would now put my last 10 degrees of flaps. That'll slow me down, and it'll, it'll give me a smoother landing. Now, be aware if ever there's more wind, uh, which we don't, wind's calm at this point, we can use a less amount of flaps. So, I don't know if you can see the, uh, the, the lines there, the multiple lines, but that's what's called your threshold. You should always land after that. And just make sure you flare when the time comes. Flaring means you're pulling up on the aircraft in order to land on your two wheels instead of your front one. So I'm safely on the ground. Now I go full power. This is considered a touch and go. Flaps up, full power, 55 knots, pitch up. Well, basically that's one of the uh, things that we practice here, traffic pattern uh, at the airport, at North Perry Airport. Um, there's many other things that uh, as a pilot you have to train on. Uh, tell, tell us more about the uh, instrument uh, training, uh, more of the things that you have to practice to become an instrument rated. You know, there, there are multiple type of approaches. So if ever you're stuck in the clouds, uh, say it's, you know, you're, you went out and it's beautiful weather and you just really want to be able to come home. You don't want to worry about, you know, getting stuck somewhere or you hit a, a storm randomly, which is com completely safe. It's okay. You don't have to worry about that. As an instrument pilot, you're allowed to fly in the clouds. So I come in, say the, the clouds have come to 500 feet. I can do an ILS, which is a precision approach. I can put in whatever I need, my GPS and so on. And basically there's a, a flight path that you're, it's already set up for you in a approach plate, which is basically just a publication, a piece of paper that has all of the surroundings, like this tower, it would tell you to stay on a course of 120, and if I did that, then I wouldn't have to worry about hitting this tower or any other uh, buildings or obstructions in my way. So I would come in, I would do an ILS, set everything up, and I would just fly down and I would land safely. So that's the, the really nice thing about being an instrument pilot. You would always, in my opinion, you'd want that because it would save you a lot of headache in the end.
So uh, basically, basically, Tim already has his private pilot license, or also he has his instrument rating. So he can fly right now uh, as a um, private pilot. Uh, he could actually fly in uh, uh, instrument conditions, or you know, uh, what we call it uh, IMC. Um, well, his goal is to actually get his uh, commercial single engine, his multi-engine commercial, and his CFI, uh, Certified Flight Instructor. So, um, how long do you think it's going to take you to get to your to your goal, to your ultimate goal? You know, I, I truly think I could do it within a full year. You could do every one of those ratings in one year. Uh, you know, you have to put in the work, but it's the, the school allows you. They have the resources and the instructors the planes and anything else you would need in order to finish it in that timely manner. And uh, you know, you can see a lot of things, but if you research a 141 certified school or certificate in that manner, you will not find it. You won't, you're you not going to see any timeline like that. So if you want to get done fast and you want to get very good instruction, uh, I, a year, right? very, very no problem. Do you have any uh, suggestions for the people that are interested in uh, uh, enrolling in Broward College and follow the uh, the professional pilot program? I mean, I, I, first of all, I would definitely suggest the school. Um, you know, I did my research before I came. Like I said, I was I lived in Mississippi, so for me to move states completely, it has to say something about the school. So I did my research and I found out that this was a great college, had very good information. I talked to Miss Evelyn, which is, she's in the background there. You know, she helped me tremendously, and I, I came here. You know, I, I, I my main thing is once you start a program, no matter where it is, make sure you study. You got to put in the time to get the knowledge, and it, it is a lot of work, but it'll be well worth it in the end. Yeah, one of Broward College's uh, suggestion to all the students is to finish what you start, and uh, also I'm I've been in the program, and I can say that. Uh, everybody here at Broward College and the Aviation Institute, they really help you so you can finish what you start. And, uh, you know, you have that support here, and if you follow your dreams, basically you'll be able to accomplish your career. So, you know, we welcome everybody to come to uh, Broward College, um, look more uh, into uh, any aviation type of career. We have different types of aviation careers. You can uh, pursue an ATC uh, or air traffic control career here in Broward College, uh, professional pilot program. We have uh, aviation maintenance and many other careers that you can choose from. Uh, not to mention, you know, we have nursing uh, degrees and we have any, many other careers that you can uh, see on our, our, our website. So, um, just to uh, kind of wrap it up here, uh, we're, we're, uh, we really appreciate your time, Tim, for uh, being with us. Um, is there anything you want to add? There is actually uh, two things. One, uh, something I like about the school is my peers, uh, Carlos included. I have always been able to ask for help. So not only if I don't want to pay for the, the knowledge, you know, there's a, a bunch of students that would happily invite you to their home and give you the knowledge to help you along your way. So, you know, there there are a lot of very good peers here, a lot of friends, if if you say. And the next thing would be. Um, it's pretty yeah, hard, right? <laughs> no, I had something good. I had something really good. Well, I, I guess that's it for now. It, it, escape my mind. It will come back to him. Thank you so much. Thank you Carlos and Tim. Uh, great advice and uh, I'm very happy on how you're progressing. A quick question for you Tim. Uh, I've noticed that you're wearing a uniform but you're a student so tell us about why do you wear a uniform here in this program? Uh, you know it's like anything. You know you have a job and if you want to look professional, if you want to feel good about what you do in life, then you have to dress it. But one main thing with Broward College is we have agreements with a lot of the airlines which guarantee you an interview to multiple different airlines. So one of the things they want to see are you dressing professionally. So we agree to wear the uniform to help us out later on in our career. Fantastic. You know, I come in and I look good, one, to look good for myself, but two, because I want that interview. And you want to look professional. Everything that you do, you want to... If you look professional, people assume that you're a professional. So that's a really good thing that we have in our college that allows you to wear the uniform and everybody looks uh, sharp. They look like professionals and that's what we try to teach all our pilot students. So, so back on the uniform, I'm sorry. Uh, we have, these are stripes. Uh, this states, I have two. Uh, you get one for private 
So once you finish your private rating, you would get one. And once you get your instrument rating, you get another. You get one for commercial, and then from there, you would have to become a CFI. So another thing to distinguish uh, me as a student and our instructors are we have different colored uniforms. So as a student, you're going to wear the blue shirt with navy blue pants. As an instructor, you're going to have a white shirt with black pants. So you never have to worry about who has the knowledge that you need or something of that sort. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to pass the word to Evelyn. Uh, she's going to explain more about the Aviation Institute and the other programs that you so well mentioned, Carlos. Thank you. Um, Carlos also did a little touch on, uh, today we are presenting on the Aviation Institute, but Broward College has a variety of programs and our uh, most popular programs would be in business, engineering, pre-medicine, and so on. But today is aviation, so Evelyn, go ahead with the presentation. Thank you very much, Regina, and thank you, Tim and Carlos. Uh, we're going to talk about the programs that um, we offer here um, at the Aviation Institute, which basically we see in our presentation, we have five different degrees, the air traffic control, as Carlos said, air programs, and aviation operations, which are business degree, aviation maintenance, which is like the uh, mechanics and uh, uh, program, and the professional pilot that we saw. So, uh, a little bit of uh, details about the program. The air traffic control is on all of our programs in aviation are fully accredited, not only by the accreditation at the school, but also by the FAA. The FAA is the Federal Aviation Administration, and basically everything that has to do with aviation in the United States has been accredited. A school uh, issued that, and for the air traffic control, we're one of the 34 schools approved by the FAA to provide this training. Uh, we do have um, uh, a, a process uh, to for the students to get hired as a traffic controllers, but most of the students, once they finish our degree, um, they get jobs in any uh, different facilities in the United States, they can get hired in anywhere in the United States. Uh, basically our program is to work with the FAA, but if an international student wants to come into our program and, and, and complete our, pro, uh, our uh, air traffic control, uh, can do it, but um, we basically work with the FAA. For the FAA, um, the student will need to be a U.S. citizen uh, to work here in the United States, and as you can see in the slide, you can they have a, a recommendation, take a uh, a test, uh, pass a medical, and a psychological test. So, as an international student, uh, we would not be able to recommend the, the job for the FAA, but the student can come to our school, do the training as an air traffic controller to work in their countries. Mm -hmm. If uh, yes, yeah. so but basically our program is mostly for the U.S. market. Uh, one of the things that we do have in our program that are very good is that we have state-of-the-art um, technology. Um, a lot, uh, our simulators and, uh, and air traffic control are the same as the flight simulators. We have a full radar, non-radar, and route tower. Uh, we have expert controllers and, and instructors in, in, the, in the program. Um, the other two programs that we mentioned is more like in the business side of aviation. So we have two degrees that will prepare if you want to come and uh, work in aviation um, management and aviation business. Uh, we have an aviation operations degree which is transferable to the university and it will prepare you to different careers in the aviation field. And the airport management, a second degree uh, that it will prepare the student to work as a, a, a study career as an airport executive. We have internships uh, at, um, in uh, Fort Lauderdale International and Miami International Airports. And I would like to mention that our international students are allowed to do these internships at uh, Fort Lauderdale International Airport and Miami International Airport. It's part of the curriculum and they are approved to do the internship at the airports. Uh, the other degree that we have is, uh, as we mentioned, is the Aviation Maintenance. Uh, that is a fully accredited FAA program as well and uh, basically will prepare the student to do uh, certificates for airframe and power plant. It's a 2,000 uh, hours, uh, clock hours program that the students can complete in 20 months plus a degree. Uh, everything testing and everything is on site and uh, we offer it completely for the students. 
within the aviation maintenance program, we also have an avionics uh, technician certificate that is um, fully accredited by the F uh, FCC. The student can complete that in eight months. Um, uh, air, uh, aviation maintenance is uh, a profession that jumps in demand right now. There is a huge need for not only in the United States but around the world for skilled uh, mechanics and, uh, and technicians in the aviation maintenance field. Um, as you can see there in the slide, it says that there's going to be a need of, uh, uh, according to the, some statistics that we have, 30,000 uh, new maintenance workers will be needed in the United States until uh, 2029. And um, uh, basically, right now we do have, this is a very successful program and um, our students um, finish and they already have uh, uh, jobs in the field. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that uh, an international student, once uh, he or she completes the associate's degree in uh, aviation operations, airport operations, or aviation maintenance management, or professional pilot technology, uh, they are allowed to uh, work for one year in the U.S. That's what we call optional practical training so they can gain experience in what they have studied. So this, the students will get the knowledge on, not only academically, but also they would be allowed to work to gain experience in their field of studies. And that applies for, um, for the maintenance program, professional pilot program, aviation or airport operations. Yeah, the last degree that we're going to talk about is the professional pilot uh, program, which you already have an insight and a very knowledge uh, um, from uh, Tim's and Carlos' presentation. We uh, have a two-year program. Uh, you can do it faster, as uh, Tim already mentioned, uh, that prepares students for all the ratings needed to become a commercial um, pilot with a, a CFI, CFII, which is Certified Flight Instructor, Certified Flight Instructor Instrument Ratings. The program is in partnership with the National Aviation Academy, which Broward College has a partnership with uh, uh, this company, and that uh, they are the ones that um, provide the simulators in uh, the airplanes for, for a program. Um, there, um, as probably some of you already know, there is a lot of a need, um, a shortage of pilots in, uh, in, the, in the world, really. Uh, the airlines will need uh, to hire, like it says there, from the Boeing perspective, like almost uh, over 400,000 pilots um, and uh, maintenance workers in, uh, between the 2010 and 2029. Uh, in the United States only is going to be needed, as you can see in the slide, uh, around 97,000 uh, pilots. So our programs, all the programs that we offer are associate's degree, uh, that will give the students the training, technical training, uh, FAA accredited, and they're also transferable to the university. We have an articulation agreement with one of the best universities here in Florida is the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. So our program, we have an articulation agreement, so if you finish with us, if you're interested in doing you can transfer there, or you can also finish with our bachelor's degree that we are coming, uh, we're going to have a bachelor's degree in aviation starting next year. Yeah, currently our students in uh, aviation um, management or airport operations, they can transfer into a bachelor's of supervision and management. Mm -hmm. they, awesome. can, they can complete the four, four years program at Broward College. So the associate's degree would be two years, which in the case of aviation will include uh, Federal Aviation Administration licenses for pilot and aircraft mechanics, uh, let's say. Uh, and besides that, they can do two years more and get a bachelor's degree with us in supervision and management. And as Evelyn just mentioned, we'll, we'll have another bachelor's degree. It started in, um, in January 2015. Uh, that will be in um, aerospace and sciences. And um, so that's basically our presentation. So if you can see in the pictures, we have a fully um, accredited, we have our own 727 airplane. We have air traffic control simulators and flight simulators, uh, state-of-the-art technology. So if you um, are thinking to come into South Florida and train with us, um, please go to our website, uh, www.broward.edu aviation. Fantastic. 
So we are going to end our presentation right now. Uh, if you have questions for either myself or Evelyn at, uh, at Broward College uh, booth at College Week Live, you will be able to find our emails. So you can send us an email directly and ask your questions. We'll be more than happy to assist you with the questions. We would really love for you to uh, come to Florida, to this beautiful, sunny, warm state and uh, have some fun with us and uh, study a lot. One of our aviation programs or maybe one of our other programs. Uh, Tim and Carlos, uh, less, less, yeah, call, got, less word. I've got a uh, couple more things. Uh, just remember whenever you do decide what you're going to do, this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. So if you can fly a plane or you know if you like to turn wrenches or whatever it is, you know, I, I absolutely love, I mean, more than anything, to get up and come train here because I love flying. So if I can get paid to do that for the rest of my life, that's what I want to do. And another thing I'd like to say is we actually have a Boeing 737 on campus that you're able to look at, you know, and experience, whether it's the maintenance degree or if you're just a pilot that would like to see, you know, a large aircraft up front. So we have a Broward College that sits at our flight school, not... 200 feet from where we work every day that you're able to look at. And basically, thank you for being with us and uh, just decide what you want to do, follow your dreams, and work hard at it, and everything will be okay. So, thank you for visiting. Thank you, guys.